Monday night's a real treat when Patty comes bursting in <laughs> with something big. Oh, look, usually a Kit Kat. That's about as big as it gets. Well, you got something pretty big tonight, oh, Patty. I? Well, I was just looking out in the control room and I can see a very shiny head there and I can see one in the studio with us tonight. It's like two babies fighting, isn't it? <laughs> yes. Bert Newton, good evening. Well, good evening to you, Bruce, and good evening, Philip. Hi, champ. How are you? I'm very well, thank you, Flip, and uh, lovely to be here with my wife. Yes. And particularly with Simon, because I, I value Simon's work very much, because I think this would be one of the hardest gigs in radio to work with two absolute doyens of broadcasters. Yeah, but why, why hard? He's learning every night. Well, no, I think he learned very quickly <laughs> in the very early days, and I think he's a wonderful guiding light for you guys. Quite often I can hear lots of his humour come through, particularly with yourself, Bruce. Oh. I, I feel but perhaps a line is used and you hear it in the cans and then you do it as your own. Is that true? No, 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 it never happens. Does that bleed? Do you hear it on there? <laughs> <laughs> now, Patty, you're normally in here, and we're talking about Bert as being interstate or in Sydney. Exactly. And... We're, we've always got a whinge, haven't we? We do. Talking about the uh, um, the awards today, Bert's got one on his lapel, see, and they're not diamond, Philip. No. They're just a little gold award. Bert's got two. He's got an AO and an AO or an AM. 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 Sorry, mm -hmm. and that's got the little blue dot in the middle. Yep. And the other one is uh, an MBE. He's got that, right. That was a long time ago yeah. now. I, I could have told Bruce that myself, but I mean, it's okay. Will he you ask know. me? <laughs> oh, <laughs> <laughs> Philip, I want to... Can I just say, yes. oh, my you, gosh, here you, we go. you yes. didn't mention all the awards that came through. One was John Foreman got one today, I too. wasn't aware of that. John no. Foreman, um, Rod Quantock, you said, didn't yeah, you? Yeah, Bruce mentioned Rod. And also Susie Allerman. Oh, did okay. she? Yes. What, why? why? <laughs> what do you think? Don't sound so surprised. No. I think she's the only one who is going to actually accept it and wear it nude. <laughs> <laughs> she's wearing her Logie dress, I think, to win it, oh, to receive okay. it. No, she's ve she's very good with charities and um, she's very helpful with it. She's got a, a big list of charities, yeah. hasn't she, Bert? Anyway, back to me. Yes, oh, okay. of course. <laughs> Hello, champ. What did you want to ask me? I wanted to ask you, Philip, uh, why didn't you hold up the conversation when uh, Bruce said that Penny Serenade was on at 4.15 uh, in the afternoon. He doesn't, on like, doesn't like to be corrected. No, oh, no, I no, see. you can correct me because it was earlier, wasn't it? it was, yes, it was uh, 3 o'clock, wasn't that, it? Absolutely, straight after a call from KZ. That's right, and at one thirty, this is the question for Bruce. Oh. At one thirty, there was a, a program called I Bring a Love Song. That's right. Uh, compared by... In my time, Jim Archer, but I believe Alan Freeman in the early days? Mm, no? Not the original. No, Alan Freeman may have done it too. And I think the man in question, but we have a name so far, was the best of them all. Eddie Barmer? No, John Best. Oh, oh John Best right. himself. Yes, and the theme used to be, I bring a love song, only a love song. Fresh as the day is old. Oh, wow. Lo no, it didn't last long, obviously. <laughs> <laughs> Jan Pierce sang it, didn't he? Yeah, I believe so. Yeah, yeah. possibly. Yes, even I know that name. Yes. Yes. Jan Pierce? Yeah. Yeah. How do you know it? I don't know how I know it, but I've, I've heard he, that he name. He sang the Bluebird of Happiness. Yes. Oh, that's oh, the one. With yes. the narration halfway Beautiful. through. Yeah. Yeah, yes. beautiful song. Now, Bert, the Rocky Horror Show looms on your, on your calendar the next... Uh, Date your next uh, appointment on stage. Mm -hmm. Could I ask you a question? Would you mind not looking at me over those glasses? I feel as though I'm in a confessional. I just feel intimidated when I look at you. I think I might look away at Simon. If this no, will... look at him. Yeah. See, this... he, had, he doesn't have to have glasses because he's had laser and he doesn't need glasses. Yeah. He's had everything done. Eh? You come in and tell us everything. Yeah, do nothing, you like his there bald is head? Nothing, uh, I have nothing which is original. <laughs> <laughs> do you like his bald head? I think it's marvellous. I look out there and it looks like, what's his name from uh, from Annie? The Moon. Uh, oh, no. Warbucks. Hayes, Hayes, Hayes Gordon. Hayes Gordon. Yes. Yes. I, okay. Why do you wave your hands around and demand oh. other people find words? Because he helps me find the word. Oh, does he? Really? <laughs> Who's the elder of the two of you? I'm five years older than Bruce. Oh, I'll okay. be 76 mm. on Tuesday of next week. Yeah. And, and Bert's I'm about one to year, be yeah. one year older than I know. July the 23rd. I never forget. I'll tell you what. There you I go. feel like I'm surrounded by old people. Yeah, but lovely people. <laughs>
Bruce and I. We're about the same age. But it's a worry when I realise my mother died at 71. Oh, well, don't be And they have lived her by five years already. That's the worry, yes, isn't it? Yes, there you go. Actually, it was my mother's anniversary on, on Saturday. Yes. It was 34 years uh, since, uh, since she died uh, on the, the 6th of June um, in, uh, obviously, in 19... 19- uh, 81. I loved your mother. Yeah, and I I went to your mum's funeral. I too. know you and Graham were there, and yeah. I will never long forget it. Long time ago. Now, how long has your mum been? Uh, she died in 1973. Right. I was thinking of your mum today. I'm sorry to leave you out of this, Bruce. No. We'll get to your mother in a few minutes' <laughs> time. <laughs> but I was driving past Evie Hayes' old home in Alexandra at, Avenue. Yes, and I remember that wonderful party that Evie gave yeah. for the mothers of all the uh, the people from Channel 9. I know your mum was there, yeah. my mum was there, and a whole range of... It was, it was a, a lovely it afternoon. It was a wonderful day. I yeah. still have photos from that day. Yeah, oh, mm. there you go. What was the reason for the event? It, it was a Mother's Day, day party. Oh. Oh. Thrown by Evie Hayes and her mother. <laughs> yes. Usually parties around the time of the year are for Mother's Day. <laughs> yes. Gosh, it was she a lived long on the Yarra, out. didn't she? Uh, no, not quite. Uh, quite near it. <laughs> <laughs> Opposite the Yarra. Yes, yeah. A did. beautiful house, yeah. wasn't yeah. it? And and she was a lovely lady. She sort of um, befriended you very severely, didn't she? Well, not severely necessarily is severely, not the word. very no. closely, but she was. <laughs> Uh, a great performer. Um, in watching the, the Tonys today and Cheetah Rivera, who was on doing a, a, yeah. a special number, that reminded me of Evie because Evie, in, even in later years, she could sell a song as well, if not better, than most people around and much younger than uh, than she was. And, and she was on a stick t- today, wasn't she, in the show? Yeah. We're but, not too sure whether it was because that was her character or if she's really on a sick but i sang to bert i remember not so long ago going to see her i don't know whether do you remember when she was here i just mentioned this is cheetah rivera by the way not evie hayes Hayes. no 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 cheetah cheetah is it no it sounds like the monkey my favorite evie hayes story do you remember the masseur harry lister i do indeed and you remember the leather couch in the men's dressing room it was I right do. down near the toilets yep. and one day i walk into uh, the men's dressing room and who should be lying naked absolutely stark naked on the leather couch but evie being pummeled by harry lister that's uh, harry lister was a champion boxer he was a, a renowned boxer he i think he won something like 15 or 16 titles and toward the end of his career well, obviously he wasn't boxing anymore but he became a masseur and I he used to yeah. massage me until such time as my dear friend the late Jeff Cork told me that there was a rumor that he was using sewing machine oil <laughs> so <laughs> I had to, find, <laughs> had to find an excuse that uh, perhaps I'll be too busy on Wednesday yeah. but a lot of machine. people used to be massaged by him didn't mm. it Joff Allen and yep. all those all the, I never did though mm. I couldn't. I'm, I'm too ticklish. I can't bear anyone to come See, oh, I love close it. to me. Yeah, Graham Kennedy tried him once, but he rubbed him up the wrong way. Oh, yeah. 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 Boom, boom. Yeah. Da, 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 da. Yes, Bert's starting Rocky Horror. Um, I think it opens on Thursday. And it has finished in Sydney now. It's finished, it's finished last Sydney. night. Two shows on Sunday, and I flew back uh, today. And I think the first preview is Thursday. That might be a friends-only night. I'm not too sure. But the official opening is on Sunday night. Uh, there are two shows on the Sunday, one in the afternoon, one at uh, 1 o'clock. Then the 5.30 one is the official one. But, you know, obviously I'd like to promote it because it's a, a great show and I enjoy being in it. But I would recommend it to anyone. I mean, it's the last time it was in Melbourne, It I think it broke a record at the Comedy Theatre where it's going back in uh, as of this week. I think there was only one night in the whole season when it wasn't a full house, mm. which uh, that doesn't happen too often. No. And uh, Craig McLaughlin, who's the star of the show, was telling me that when they uh, w- uh, went to uh, to Adelaide last year to a season there, uh, it was a case of I think there was only one night where there was one spare seat, and it was the same night that um, I think it was uh, I think it was the Lion King opened or something, and it you know it, obviously they took a lot of uh, customers too, but just one night there with one spare seat, which is quite Gee, extraordinary. Yeah. Isn't it? Uh, Isn't it? Now, do you get a chance to live in the show, or do you have to stick to a script? 
Uh, it's a scripted show, but you can ad lib. Um, there are real devotees of Rocky Horror Show who know the show and the script as well as anyone who's playing in it. And on occasions, they will throw uh, shout outs at you. Uh, there's one at the, uh, at the very start. My first line is, uh, I would like, if I may, to take you on a strange journey. And I got the shock of my life about three nights in after joining the show. I said, I would like, if I may, and all of a sudden a voice from the audience shouted that you may. Oh. I said, oh, thank you. And then I kept going. And the next oh. line is, I would like, if I may, to take you on a strange journey. And this same night a voice said, uh, how strange! Oh. And, and I thought, oh my God, I, uh, as strange as Tony Abbott, uh, uh, chicken smugglers. No, I don't mean that. I mean, I mean the bungee smugglers. <laughs> oh. There you go. And and can you read from the book, or is it pretty uh, well something you learn? I learned? do about, I think about twelve appearances, and I read from the book at the very beginning yeah. and then uh, toward the end but the rest is the book is under my arm but I, I, I just do the script as you is. You and Craig McLaughlin have great uh, rapport apparently. Yes I, I didn't know Craig all that well of course I you know I was aware of his great talent and I was a huge fan and am a huge fan of his ABC series uh, the Dr Blake mm, mysteries. Wonderful. Uh, and we knew him, of course, from the old days and neighbours and That's right, so forth. Yeah. And uh, he always had a great reputation in the studio. That with the he crew was, and so yeah, forth, very, yeah. very kind to the crew and the other cast members. Mm. And the, the the interesting thing is that uh, that hasn't changed. Uh, he's loved by the cast and the crew backstage. Uh, he's terrific to work with. And also, um, I've done some television with him in terms of interviews and things, but I've had a chance now to, to get to know him, and he's, he's a terrific bloke. And I, I mentioned in the story, which I think has been in the Herald Sun already, that a lot of his work reminds me of Graham Kennedy, mm. not in appearance, but in his ability to, uh, to do a double take and in his ability to read an audience. Uh, his, his performance does vary from night to night simply because he reads that audience so well. Most of us on stage are inclined just to, to do it as it is and do our best every night, but he'll pick and choose what to put in and what to leave out, and I think that's a, that's a gem of an ability to have. Did he appear in Beauty and the Beast? Was he in that show with you? Not that I right. know of. No, no. Okay. no. you're thinking of. Um, I think he yes, you are. Cormac, <laughs> you know what's oh, his name? Michael Cormac. Michael Cormac. Michael Cormac. That's that I'm reminds of. me when I listen to you three guys on a Monday night. I like particularly when it's Bruce and T Patty. Tell, tell, tell the boys what Lauren said to you on the way in. Well, I was just going to to say exactly that. We had a, a, a chat to Laura on the phone. And I asked if she want a cheerio, you know, as a little yeah. gag, so, you know, sort of. So lots of love to you, Law. Uh, and she said, well, I hope that you're uh, not like Bruce and, uh, and Mum. Quite often they get into conversation and one says, the show I used to like was that one with, you know what, the one with the bald head? I can't think of his name, Patty. There's no, I can't. Oh, he was, uh, I think... I think no, it was a detective show. It was on um, a Wednesday night. No, it was on a Thursday. No, no I don't, well, I don't know. Anyway, I went down the street and guess who I saw? I saw that singer who used to sing the commercial for, oh, you know what. Uh, I can't, I can't, I can't. Isn't it so true? Oh, so true. Yeah. I know. Oh, that's funny. That's I, lovely. I oh. often look at Bruce thinking... Give me strength. You, you'll know the Get name. Me tell me yeah. what it is. And occasionally Philip will say, da 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 da. And I think, oh, thank you, Phil. That's right. Now, speaking of. Um, I've got of... to say, by the way, speaking of Philip, the reason that he's able to help you out, I can't think of anyone in our business who has a better general knowledge than Philip Brady. No, there isn't he anyone. He is quite, oh, thank you, but... quite amazing. I'll be listening to you blokes and, and enjoying it. And you'll just make mention of something, Bruce, mm. and all of a sudden Philip comes in with the year, yeah. uh, who the person is married to, mm. what their favourite colour is, yes. and all, all sorts of details. That's right, whether we want it or not. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and I'm not aware it's true? right. Now, you're speaking about Graham. Do you get a chance to see, but do you get a chance to see Graham Norton? Because I see a lot of Graham Kennedy in Graham Norton. Yeah, I can see that. Yeah, yes. I can. I was telling Philip and Bruce last week that um, I sent away for a couple of books for you, and one of them was the Graham Norton uh, autobiography. But yeah. you weren't that as keen on it as I thought you might be. 
Well, well, it was great, but it was it wasn't warts and all. Not that it needs to be, but most of the stuff I sort of knew anyway. But the interesting thing is, with Graham Norton, a lot of people have said the same thing about you know reminding them of uh, of Graham Kennedy. And I was having a chat to an actor in uh, in Sydney, not one in the show, one who'd come to see the show, and we're having a chat afterwards. And he made mention of the same thing that the Graham Norton show, you know, it it was able to get the sort of audiences and reaction that Graham Kennedy used to get. And I, I pointed out to him the big difference is that Graham Norton has the biggest names in the world as guests. You have a look at an old running sheet of in Melbourne tonight. If it was done just as the sheet asked it to be done, the show would be over in 30 minutes. <laughs> exactly. The whole show yeah. was basically, with the exception of throwing to artists at centre stage and to live commercials, it was Graham, Graham himself, who got that audience, and I think that was the genius That's of him. That's right. I mean, do you remember, and bless him, Bob Horsfall, the first time he ever compared IMT and stood in for Graham, possibly at very short notice, he was so nervous, the whole show, including The Wheel, was over by 12 past 10. That's right, I remember that. <laughs> and Eric yeah. Pierce had to rush in from home yeah. to read the late news. And yeah. there was another time, actually, and Eric features in this too, an actor whom I won't name because it would be unfair. Uh, I think he's passed on anyway, but he did in Melbourne tonight on one occasion, and he did it just as the running sheet had before him. And it started at 9.30 and it finished at about a quarter past 10, where normally it finishes <laughs> at, at 5 11 to, or something. Yeah, yeah, about 5 to 11. And Eric oh. Pierce told me that he always, and Philip would know this, and probably Bruce too, he would be sitting at home having a, you know, his last coffee for the day or night or whatever. And once the wheel began, uh, he would get into the car and drive in and do the late news on this particular occasion. He missed the wheel because it was on at ten past ten, oh. and, and he raced from Turak into the into the studios and got a speeding ticket. Oh. <laughs> and I, I happened to be doing booth that night. And the poor man was out of breath. Oh, <laughs> Good evening, oh, yeah. <laughs> Welcome today. <laughs> Do you know my favourite Eric Pierce story is one night he walked into makeup and Helen Nowoff was doing makeup in those days. Yeah. And Helen happened to say to Eric, he wasn't to Eric in those days, Oh, Eric, you've got some chewing gum on your shoe. Mm. And Eric looked down and said, Oh, and I can't repeat oh, the word he used. <laughs> Why would he whistle? <laughs> oh, he used the next one. Yes. Oh, surprisingly. Yes, I think. Oh, no, worse. That's oh, a well really? told story, isn't it? Yeah, absolutely worse. I also, remember the times when IMT would go overtime. Yeah. When uh, the clock reached 11, there was often Graham would say to the news host, You're happy to. Uh, Stay on? Yes. Mm. Yeah. Exactly. Because it was a union thing. That's that, right. Yeah. That they, they were into your It's amazing yeah. when you think that in those years there was a ballet on staff, mm. there was a choir on staff, and all the musos yeah, were on staff. Right. Twelve and musos, think... twelve dancers and twelve singers, mm. all under contract. And a lot of the musos particularly said that they'd never done a gig before where you got holiday pay. Yes. Mm. You know, exactly. and they were off over Christmas and, uh, and January. And yeah. about eight on booth announcers on the roster too at that there time. There were. Let's name them. Uh, well, I, uh, from the very start, the first Bruce was would Jeff... be one? No, Did but you? at the yeah. start was Jeff Cork, yeah. Hal Todd, Bob mm. Horsfall. Yeah. I was the fourth to join. Mm -hmm. And then you weren't... You were Jack there. Little. Jack Little was there and uh, Pete Smith came... In '64, yeah, um, Paul Jennings, yes, Peter Sellier, Peter but... Sellier, and also um, the, the one from the ABC who sadly died last year, Bob Moores, yep, and Barry McQueen, yes, Barry and McQueen. Jeff Hiscock, and Jeff Hiscock, oh, yes. and the man from Perth. The oh, diminutive oh, man. The, um, oh, yes, yes. What's his name? Bonnie someone? Yeah, yeah no, Bonnie, no. Bonnie Tyler. <laughs> no, bon here we go. Bon 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 right. bon yes. Bon yes. My favourite story from that era <laughs> with musicians was the late Arthur Young, who was a oh. wonderful Englishman and, and, a, and a wonderful musician and a, a top bloke, but so British, you know, you just you couldn't get over it. You knew exactly where he came from as soon as you met him. 
And he he actually he was very successful in England. He had hit records. He, he backed uh, Vera Lynn on several of her big hits. That's right. Yes. And Hey Little Hen, I think, was one of uh, his recordings. Anyway, he got to Australia and got this gig, and he was a wonderful musical director, and he was the first one to conduct a Channel 9 orchestra with strings and the whole thing. And it was the Graham Kennedy National Show, and they were very nervous days because everyone was concerned that the show wasn't going to be successful nationally. And they had a, uh, an Italian soprano uh, be on the show, and she rehearsed in the afternoon in the old studio, and Arthur's there conducting the full orchestra and everything's fine, and got onto the, uh, the show itself, and she sang her song, whatever it was. It wasn't an aria, but it was a, a classical song of some kind. At that finish, the applause uh, sounded out, and they went to a commercial, and she went to Arthur Young and said, Mr Young, um... I have a feeling that the tempo, or tempi as they say, the tempi uh, on the show itself was different uh, to rehearsal this afternoon. And he said, Madam, we promise nothing. <laughs> <laughs> Bowel cancer is Australia's second biggest cancer killer. It often develops without any warning signs, and the number of Australians affected continues to rise. Preventable, treatable and beatable. Bowel Cancer Australia needs your help to continue saving lives through prevention and early detection, supporting people with bowel cancer, and funding research to benefit all of us. June is Bowel Cancer Awareness Month. Please donate at bowelcancerawarenessmonth.org. This Saturday, Mercedes-Benz Melbourne holds their first-class demonstrator event with 3AW broadcasting on the spot. Join us Saturday morning from 6, live from Australia's largest Mercedes-Benz dealership at 135 Kingsway, South Melbourne on 3AW 693. Breakfast with Ross and John. You know, it's quite difficult that we have to sort of look up uh, recipes. Here we go. First, get your te tagliatelle. You know, it's a bit difficult for them too. An Italian chef trying to use the well-known ingredient Worcestershire sauce. We got to use this one drop of Worcestershire shusha. <laughs> what? what? One chest of shisha. Breakfast with Ross and John for Harris Scarf. Save 30 to 50% off all clothing, footwear and underwear at Harris Scarf's Giant June Clearance. On now. If you have a phobia of going to the dentist or find it challenging to get the kids to go for even a checkup, now you can sleep through your visit to the dentist. Centre for Aesthetic and Implant Dentistry offer sleep dentistry. It's a comfortable way of going to the dentist and you can get all dental work done in one session. Safe for adults and children, sleep dentistry is performed under the supervision of specialist anaesthetists in a purpose-built facility. Call 8845 5400 or visit sleepdentistrymelbourne.com.au you. There's something about the sea air and something idyllic about Sorrento, a lovely place to live in comfort. Sorrento Lodge Residential Aged Care offers all levels of individual care. Home-cooked meals are enjoyed in a home-like environment with just 34 residents and an extensive activities program including exercise, gardening, bingo and bowls and trips to the beach. Have a chat to Sorrento Lodge and find out more. Call 5984-2646. That's 5984-2646. Hi, Bruce Mansfield here. Break free from pain in days, not weeks, without pills or injections. The BQR Laser is a handheld technology breakthrough that stimulates the body's own healing mechanisms to relieve ongoing pain at its source, including osteoarthritis and many other conditions. I've been using it for a year and haven't looked back. Don't take my word for it. Get your free information pack by calling 1300 499 455. The BQ Laser. Break free from pain and get back to active like me. Hello. National Tiles has been saving professional tilers up to $8,000 per year with the industry's lowest adhesive prices. And now with massive reductions on a much bigger range of products, National Tiles is saving tilers up to $26,000. Yes, with trade club prices locked down permanently, professional tilers are now saving up to $26,000 per year. So tilers, come into National Tiles now and save. Australian mandarins are in season now, and these little beauties are bursting with sweet goodness. Australian-grown, sweet, juicy more mandarins, just $2.90 a kilo. Just $2.90. If it's fresh and in season, it's in Coles. Nightline for the Sleep Doctor Hawthorne, your electric bed specialist, and Caruso Super Curcumin Arthritis Relief for the pain of mild arthritis. <laughs> Ha, ha, ha. 
Now that is Bert doing Demos Roussos. Oh, that's right, yes. On the Don Lane show. But did he have a sense of humour? Was he OK about it? Oh, yeah, he was fine. He uh, was wonderful, wasn't he? Yes, he, he loved it. I, I didn't realise that he'd stayed around, but he was told that I was doing it all once. I, I think actually he went to leave the studios ah. to go back to his accommodation and they stopped him at the gate and said... You know, Bert's done an impression of you, or is doing an impression, so he raced back and they said, yeah, go on. And uh, unfortunately, he ruined the act for me the next time he was over, because he lost about seven yes. stones. Yes, mm. remember he was very yeah, thin. Right. He was huge. Yeah. And he just died not so long yes, ago. Yes, yes. And one of the things was he'd put all the weight back on, and he was uh, huge, oh, apparently. Yeah. One person who wasn't happy about something that I did, um, Sir Richard Attenborough was the director of... Uh, <laughs> of one particular movie that he was promoting. He was over here and interviewed, and it was Gandhi. Yes. And after he'd left, I didn't realise he'd left the building, I went on as Gandhi. Uh, and it was hilarious. That's when oh, yes, Don yeah. fell off the chair oh, and the they laughed and laughed. And what, when the show finished, I usually left immediately because I was doing radio next morning and, uh, you know, I'd, I'd, I'd finish off the show and I'd be home with Patty within 10 minutes mm. or, or something. And as I was leaving, Richard Attenborough had returned mm. to the studios and he said, excuse me, I know that you're on this program, um, uh, someone told me that there was someone who went on uh, actually and uh, did a vaudevillian sketch on Gandhi and he's looking at me and I said yeah, yes they, yes and, and and I suddenly realized he wasn't too happy so I said and I thought it was disgraceful <laughs> and I said, oh, well, fine. He said I'd, I'd like to have a few words with the person in question I said well I'm not too sure whether he's still here but I'll have a look around for you if, if, if you'd like to come with me and I walked around the dressing room area, calling out Peter, because Peter Smith was the first name I came up with. Oh, Peter, are you there? Uh, Peter? But no, he's obviously gone. He said, oh, well, I tell you what, I'm flying out first thing tomorrow morning, but if I hadn't been flying out first thing tomorrow morning, he'd certainly know that I was around. I said, well, yeah. Anyway, oh. wonderful movie, Lord Attenborough, and I'm, I'm terribly sorry for any upset that's been caused. Oh, <laughs> really. yes. Now, Tommy of Roville has rung in. Uh, Tommy, are you there? Yeah, I'm still there, Bruce. Just, mate, how you going? Yes, fine, thanks. <laughs> That's good. And Patty and Bert. I'm Hello, there. how are you going, Tommy? Good, thanks. I've never spoken to you, Bert, and it's an absolute pleasure. Oh, good on you, Tommy. Um, yeah, I actually won tickets through your beautiful station there, boys, on 3RW. I'm taking my beautiful girl, um, Susie, to the Rocky Horror Show on Thursday night, but all the advertising keeps on telling me it starts Friday, so I'm rather panicking. Will I get there and no one be there? Sir. No, look, I think, I think you've answered the question that I posed. I think that the Thursday night performance is what they call a, a house performance, and they have members of the audience who've won competitions, and also, if there are enough seats left over, they allow the, the cast members and crew members to invite friends to come and see the show. So if you've got them for Thursday, you'll be sweet. I know there's an audience on Thursday night, and and are you are you there Thursday night? Yes, I certainly am. Yep. Oh, yep. Oh, I've there. got to get him out of the house some way, Tommy. Yeah. <laughs> so uh, yeah, you'll be there and you'll enjoy it. What's your what's your partner's name? Uh, Susie, right? Susie. Susie yeah. Well, I'll, Susie will enjoy it too. I'll try and give her a special wave. Oh, that'd be fantastic. Yeah, she'll be looking for it. But I used to actually listen to you when you did the morning show. Was it 3UZ or something? Yeah, 3UZ, yes. Yeah. Long yes. time ago. That's how, that's how far back I've gone. Listening. Well, as a matter of fact, there was a wonderful that. breakfast program preceding that for uh, for quite some time. Uh, Bruce Mansfield and the news director of 3UZ. Yes, <coughs> a man <coughs> by the name of, uh, it was News Voice? Paul Sine. Paul, Paul Sine. Yeah. And uh, they were amazing. They came into a breakfast program which was rating 11. And they work like hell, and they got it down to twos. <laughs> they, <laughs> it, and it was nothing to do with Bruce and Paul. It, oh. it was all to do with the fact that I don't think Melbourne was ready for two very similar voices doing mm. nothing but news that for three hours. It's too much. It really but was. I thought you were the... I thought you were fabulous. Yes, that? you were very supportive in those days. <laughs> I'll never forget your support. <laughs> I remember saying to you on the first morning, mm. how long do you think this is going to last? Yeah. You know, said, well, oh, I don't know. I'm a little bit nervous myself, you said. I came in that morning when the ratings came out and we had dived and, <laughs> and you had, you, you'd resurrected the 9 o'clock program. Yes. But I came in, so a bit disappointing. 
I think you better go and see management. <laughs> I didn't say that. <laughs> was that oh. Bob Cornish days? Bob was, Cornish and yeah. Bill Gates. Ah, uh, yes. The late Bob Cornish. Yeah. He, yeah. Died, he died very young, didn't he? He Bob? did, he mm. did. Yeah, yes. He's a nice man. What's well, nice? But, uh, Brian at Werribee, are you there, Brian? Yeah, Patty was wondering, um, she saw Cheetah Rivera recently. Well, Cheetah Rivera came out to Clive Scott, the best hotel here in Melbourne, brought her out just to play the Sofitel. About five, six years ago. That's it. And yes. when I was there, Barry Humphreys was also in the audience. And uh, I, Lauren and I went and we yes. sat beside Barry Humphreys and we had a wonderful night. But she was fabulous. She was yes, so well, good. I think she's about oh, 81, 82 now. I was going to say, yes. to seeing yes. her on the Tonys tonight, um, she looked very, you know, she, elderly, really, and a little frail. I think she's still getting off the stage, but anyway. <laughs> now, Bert, I can't wait to see you in fishnet. Be like the old days, you know. Anyway. Yeah. <laughs> oh no, his legs have got skinnier. Let yes. me tell you. Uh, let me uh, just add: when you say uh, the old days, uh, you do mean when I was doing a pantomime effect <laughs> on in Melbourne tonight. Nothing else, I hope. And actually, I, I, I'm wondering what you did. You actually see her on the the Tonys? Cheetah Rivera? Uh, no, I'm going to watch, I'll watch it on the replay. You know, they replay them every second, every night, yeah. and after the award shows and that. So I watched a bit of it today, but I'll watch it. I'll, I'll catch up with Cheetah on the... Uh, well, I'm sure she's waiting to see me too right. on, the, on the replays, you know. Your best friend. What yeah. you'll find very interesting is the, the, the two hosts on the show, Kristen Chemmelweth and Alan Cumming, they would do more costume changes than anybody else I've ever seen. Yeah, it was uh, an interesting show, wasn't it, Bert? It was not... It was. It wasn't uh, one of my favourites, but it was, you know, there was a hell of a lot of work that went mm, into it. Mm. What and was our caller's name? Uh, that was Brian. Uh, yes. You're still there, Brian? Yes, yes. What yes. you will enjoy if you like musical theatre, there are so many shows on Broadway and up for Tony's on this particular uh, award night that are from the past. And yes. they they do Shaners from each of these shows. Uh, An American in Paris is uh, is one. Uh, the, the King, King and, and I, I is another that one. That was a big winner. Yeah, they won all the things. Is that still John Frost's production? It is the, the production. I'm not too sure whether uh, he's involved with it. Oh, he possibly possibly is actually. Yes. But it got best musical, oh. and it got and for the revisited m m um, musical. Yeah, so we've now ruined it for you, Brian. You know oh, who no. wins. It, it's Bert, everywhere. Bert, you still there? Yes. Yes. I'll tell you a quick funny story. I took my great nephew to see you in Greece oh, back in January, right? Yep. And I wrote to you weeks before to say we're coming. We're going to you know pop back and say hello and everything. So, you know, we went backstage with John Frost organised it and everything, right? Anyway, and she said, look, we'll go and see Bert before he goes. And we went, went to see Bert. Bert had chopped through like a Bondi tram, you see. <laughs> <laughs> and I thought, well, he's had a bit of a funny turn. I wrote to him two weeks ago, you know. Anyway, so, you know, I bring my nephew to say hello, that's OK. Next day I get a letter back from not known return to sender, Bert Newton. Ah, oh, oh, there you go. Now, two oh. great icons, the Regent Theatre yeah. and Bert Newton, and the postman couldn't find either of you. Oh, well, there you go. <laughs> yeah, well, now I, I feel so much better because I thought, you know, I was guilty of doing something that I shouldn't have done. I, if, if there is a situation like that, I always stay back because I know how important it is. When I was a, a kid uh, in single figures and I went to see a show and I had the opportunity of, of even just gazing at, you know, at many of the people who'd been on stage, uh, it gets to a situation where it's something you remember for the you know the rest of your life. Well, the great thing is, Bert, the uh, the manager of the show, Sally, she took my nephew's program, and you all within a week had all personally signed it to him, and he, he keeps it in a big box in his bedroom now, and he says that's, that's special. That's special, Uncle Brian. Well, if you happen to see anything goes, you'll know the backstage, uh, Sally, that you mentioned is also the company manager of that show too. So, oh, you know, who knows? It could be uh, another lucky turn for you. Mm. 3AW Drive. Will history be kind to Alan Bond now that he's part of history? Well, I think once people pass away, you don't spend your life criticising them. Three to six weekdays. There'll be a mixed view, but he was highly enthusiastic, always on the go, wanting to do something. He was always enjoyable to meet, make no mistake. I mean, I had some great experiences well, with him. Let, let, I never did any business with him. Let's call Alan Bond a lovable rogue. Drive on 3AW 693.
If you need to decide on a family resting place, there's no better time than now. We currently have places available in our magnificent mausoleums at Preston, Williamstown and Lilydale. Buy direct from the Greater Metropolitan Cemeteries Trust now and avoid the July price rise. Plus, you won't pay GST on graves or crypts as all rights of internment are exempt when purchased from us. Do it for your family tradition. Call us for an appointment on 9355 3100. What can you do with your garden at this time of year? Visit Town & Country Gardens in High Street, Malvern, and ideas will be all around. Add some charm indoors for the cooler months with potted plants, hanging plants and terrariums. Town & Country have a huge array of items for indoor gardening, from the best kind of plants to pots, baskets and planters, from traditional to popular groovy modern pieces. And check out their beautiful new gift and homewares, fresh from recent buying trips. Visit Town & Country Gardens, 1311 High Street, Malvern. Hi, Rob Sinclair from ENS Trade. Our massive end of financial year sale is on now. Hurry, receive huge savings on fridges, washers, dryers, dishwashers, ovens, range hoods, cooktops, microwaves, and more. Sale ends June 30. Visit estrading.com.au. All it takes is one phone call and you could win a brand new Jeep. Are you standing up or sitting down? Sitting down. That's good, Alex. You've just won a Jeep Cup of Sport worth almost $30,000. No. Yes, you have. What have you seen? I don't think anyone can believe how she got there. What have you heard? Over 200 of their truck drivers have done this. Call Tom Elliott's Drive Show with your word on the street for your chance to win. City Jeep. Experience, integrity and value. Word on the street in Drive with Tom Elliott on 3AW693. The permit 15 slash 15. Retirement is strictly a celebration, so kick up your heels. Nominate your ultimate dance partner at 3aw.com.au. You could win two tickets to Strictly Ballroom and Musical, pre-show drinks at Ridges, Melbourne, and meet the cast. Thanks to Home Safe Wealth Release. Change nothing, change everything. Hello. National Tiles has been saving professional tilers up to $8,000 per year with the industry's lowest adhesive prices. And now with massive reductions on a much bigger range of products, National Tiles is saving tilers up to $26,000. Yes, with trade club prices locked down permanently, professional tilers are now saving up to $26,000 per year. So tilers, come into National Tiles now and save. I'm Grace and my three-year-old son Jack and I are homeless. I'm Grace and we have something to eat. I'm Grace and we have blankets and clothes. I'm Grace and we have a warm place to sleep tonight. I'm Grace, and our rent is paid, and there's food on the table. I'm Grace, and we even have money left for Jack's medicine. Rebuild lives with Vinnie's this winter. $50 means food. $100 brings warmth. $200 provides safety. Search Vinnie's Winter Appeal. Nightline for the Sleep Doctor Hawthorne, your electric bed specialist, and Caruso's Super Curcumin Arthritis Relief for the pain of mild arthritis. 7 to 9 on uh, Melbourne's own 3AW with Bert Newton and Patty, just on the eve of the opening of the Rocky Horror Show film. It's going to be huge. I love all the hoardings outside the comedy. It looks so enticing, you know. I can't wait for it to start. Oh, it's it's a good show. Uh, Patty's seen it a couple of times, and you I approve do. of it, yes, don't you? I think it's well. I was a bit worried because I hadn't seen it, and Matt and Lauren had come to see it in Melbourne at the comedy um, long before Bert was involved, and they said, "Mum, you'll have to go and see the show. You'll love it." And I never got round to seeing it. So when I went to Sydney, they said. You know, like it's a little risque in places, so, you know, you have to keep your mind open. So I never got around to see it. So when Bert was involved, I went up to Sydney and saw it, and I have to say I loved it. It's very funny. And, you know, it's that with so many tragedies and things, we say this so often, don't we? With so much happening in the world and so many bad things happening, it is rather nice to go to a theatre show and find that, most of the time you haven't got a smile off your face mm. and you've had a really good night and it's a lot of fun and it's a great cast, headed, of course, by Craig McLaughlin, but he's wonderful in it. I mean, there's been a lot of people that have done that role. I think um, we Reg saw, Livermore. Yeah, Iota. We saw him it, do that's that. That's right, we did. Mm. And he was fabulous. But Craig did it, um, I think, originally about 12, 13 years ago. He's done it in England too. In, uh, As had in London, Jason Donovan. And Jason Donovan. And Richard O'Brien, who is the, the writer, the author uh, of the show, 
uh, he chose uh, Craig to do it in London. Mm. So you would think in England there'd be you know quite a few choices around. Yes. Uh, but he thought he was outstanding, yeah. and he is in the. Show. I'm to a stage now where I can't imagine anyone else doing it. Certainly as well. Who have been in the other uh, in the fishnets? Uh, I, I owe Reg Livermore. Oh, Reg Livermore. We've yeah, just talked about the main that. Yeah, yes. What about narrators? No, no, but I, I, I wanted to steer you in the narration department. Yes, but we had we had in the narration. Oh, had two or three. Yeah. Uh, um, <laughs> da Darren Hinch, mm. Kamal. But, no, but they haven't. They haven't played Frankenfurter. No, no. they've played. They've played the narrator. <laughs> yes. John yes. Wood, I think. John Wood did it. Uh, probably. Yes. <laughs> I'm a little thrown now because I've I've noticed tonight that the Bruce uh, gets hold of a question and then just keeps asking us whether you whether you answer it or not. But, uh, but it's lovely well, to see you both. Yeah, yeah, we went to see um, Lauren and I took on Friday because the kids had the day off school. We went to the Melbourne Town Hall and saw the Wiggles with the Melbourne Symphony Orchestra. Is oh, that right. how you say it? Yes. Yeah. Oh, gee, it was fabulous. I, I must tell you too, Bruce, that uh, earlier last week, uh, Patty and Lauren took the kids to see the Wiggles with the uh, the Melbourne Symphony Orchestra. <laughs> oh, yes. Was that at the Melbourne Town Hall? Uh, at the Melbourne Town Hall. Has anyone ever played them before? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I tell you something about the Wiggles. Emma, the young girl, it is the best move that the Wiggles have ever made bringing in young Emma. She's so fabulous. She married one of the Wiggles. No, she hasn't married him, Bruce. She's oh, I just, thought she did. No, they're mm. just holding hands at this moment. Right. They, they, I'm hoping they'll get married. They're very nice. They're a very nice couple. They're both very young and very... So they came to see Rocky Horror, didn't they? They came to see Rocky Horror, and I think coming from the Wiggles straight into Rocky Horror, yeah. I think Emma saw quite a difference. <laughs> Oh. She said, I've, um, I've never seen a show quite like this before. Oh. I think but it they was. Loved it. Yeah, they, loved they did. They loved it. Is, is it very uh, similar to the movie? The oh, yes, show? it is. Yeah. yeah. Very much so. Yeah. yeah. Very much so. It's, it's a bit weird and a bit. You know, Look, odd. Yeah, but to... it's ageless, isn't it? It no, is ageless. Like. But speaking of age, I mean, frankly, you wouldn't bring young kids to, uh, no, to see it. No. Not for any devious reason, <clears throat> except to, you know, it's it's a show that's based basically from teenagers to, you know, good morning, Adults. doctor. Yeah. Yeah. You know, yeah. It's, yeah. Yeah. It's, it's simply that. But, if, you know, if it was... I was talking to a lady at Stage Door the other night and she said, uh, before coming, you know, I was thinking of bringing the kids. I think they would have loved it. But I said, how old were they? Are they? And she said, you know, uh, six and nine or something. And it's not for them. No, uh, no. But it's... But it's, it's for... Yeah, like teenagers. Yes. It's, yeah. it's a party. It's a... You know, it's a good night out. As Patty said before, with so much bad news around, this is a case to, you know, you can sit back, relax... And you're going to get a lot of laughs, and you're going to see a lot of performers, not just Craig, but a lot of the uh, supporting cast put in performances, which are, uh, you know, they're world class. What was life in Sydney like, Bert? Did you enjoy it? Uh, walk Walking around manly? He had a wonderful oh, time. I always walk around manly. <laughs> uh, he I, stayed yes, at I a know. beautiful hotel. Uh, he had a beautiful room. Yes. And he was looked after pretty well. So yes. I think coming home, I'll be telling him to turn the lights off. No, the bed's going to stay unmade. That's There's right. nobody coming in to make it up for you. That's right. Yes. No yes. room service. No. Yes. I tell you what, just before I, 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 we have to leave you, uh, Bruce, I'm just wondering, is Norman around tonight, Mr I'd, Banks? I'll see whether he's Okay, you, you, you don't mind. Oh, Bert. <laughs> oh, you've really uh, <laughs> knocked the stuffing out of me, Bert. With How this, are you, uh, Norman? appearance tonight, I didn't uh, know that you'd be in here. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> is it OK to call you Norman, or do you prefer Mr Banks? Well, I don't mind Norman. I don't like Norm, by the way. Oh, I okay. prefer Norman. Uh, what about football? Uh, Collingwood and Melbourne today? Oh, marvellous game. Marvellous. I was out there with Don Hyde. <laughs> we called the game from start to finish. Anyway, I've got to go, so I'll see you outside. I would do well, Bert. I'm so pleased to have seen you. I'll take a cookie with me if I know you. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Oh, thank, but, oh, thanks for coming thank in. Thank you folks. both so much. It was really yeah. lovely. Thank uh, you, Bruce, and thank you, Phyllis. Lovely to see you both. Good luck for opening night, which I believe is Thursday night. Officially, oh, it's it. Sunday. Sunday at five thirty. But they have yes. previews and and mm. special performances. Yeah. Before Can that. I just have a word with Patty? You're yeah. wrong. They didn't ask us to stay for the right. extra. <laughs> 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 Goodbye now. Goodbye, Patty. <laughs>